In this video, we're talking chiaroscuro and what it means for your portrait photography. My name is Pai, and I'm one of the founders of Lynn and Jersa Photography and slrlounge.com. We're teaming up with Adorama to bring you a new series of photography tutorials called Master Your Craft right here on Adorama TV. So let's dive in. What's up, my friends? My name is Pai. Welcome back to Adorama TV. It's wonderful being back here with y'all. Today, I want to dive straight into a very important kind of nuanced lighting lesson that refers back to chiaroscuro lighting. And we've actually done kind of some touching on this topic back when we introduced dark mode editing to you, right? If y'all don't remember dark mode editing, go back and reference that video. But one of the key components of kind of editing with this style of being able to control highlights and shadows is framing your subjects against darker backgrounds. Now this technique is referred to as chiaroscuro and it actually comes, and I hope I'm, I'm saying this right, if I'm not then, I'm sure you're gonna let me know in the comments. So if you go to Google and you actually uh, type in Rembrandt paintings, you're gonna see Rembrandt and other famous classic painters have made this style very popular. And essentially what they were doing was they were painting their portraits uh, on a darker background. So you'll see the highlights on the face with a dark background in each of these kind of Rembrandt style portraits. So that is one of the characteristics of the Rembrandt look is chiaroscuro lighting. It's lighting your subject up so that the highlights are on their face and then you place them against a darker background. And then other obvious characteristics of Rembrandt style was the Rembrandt lighting pattern that featured the triangle, right? Well, let's go back to our actual photographs and I'm gonna give you several examples of chiaroscuro lighting in everyday situations and I'm gonna show you how they can dramatically change the quality of your image. This is a portrait of my friends, Brooke and Barry. Now, as you'll see in the behind the scenes video, we are standing in a parking lot in front of a store. This purple wall is just a column that's been painted purple and they're standing and facing out towards the light. So this is chiaroscuro lighting. We have highlights on our subject's face, they're brought out and the background itself is darker. Now in a moment, I'm gonna show you other kind of everyday scenes where you can get this kind of lighting. But for right now, let's just focus on this image and what this allows you to do inside of post. So first, I'm gonna choose a look to apply to this. It can be really anything. Um, I'm gonna go between, and, and choose any preset that you like. I'm gonna use uh, Visual Flows Pack here. Now for this image, because we have that blue wall, I think I'm gonna go with Crush. I dig that. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is actually lower the exposure a little bit and lower the contrast a little bit, and then I'm gonna add in this radial burn. Okay, so a radial burn is literally just a radial filter that you have set to negative 0.5 exposure and I drop it in and I save this as a preset. If y'all haven't done this by now, you better do it because I literally say it in every single video. So what I'm gonna do with this radial burn is I'm gonna place it right over, uh, I'm gonna place it over Brooke's eye and I'm gonna start pulling down. So holding Alter Option, I can actually pull down and we're gonna go to negative 1.27. I'm also gonna lower the contrast just a bit. And what you're gonna notice now, I'm gonna raise the blacks a little bit. Okay. So what you're gonna notice is, this is the original shot, right? We've added a heavy, heavy vignette to this background. But you'll notice it doesn't look like we've necessarily added that vignette. And it's because the background is naturally darker and we naturally have a highlight on our subjects. And this allows us to do simple dodging and burning very easily with these large types of brushes and have a very refined look to the shot. In addition, we have complete control over tones, right? Because their skin tones are registering in a different area. See, what we're doing is we're taking Rembrandt's technique, we're taking chiaroscuro and we're applying it to a digital era. A digital era where we have complete control over the actual tones of the image in post. So if I pull this overall exposure down, I can actually control the brightness of skin tones through highlights and through my white point. This makes for very easy, very dramatic and painterly edits, okay? So let's go ahead and I'm gonna find a balance between those two. I'm gonna pull the highlights down a little bit, pull the whites down a little bit. 
and right about here, I'm gonna add a tiny bit more contrast, and that's great. Now, in looking at this image, you'd think this was shot in a studio, but it's natural light in a parking lot. If you're wondering about the settings, by the way, this was 1 250th of a second, f2.8 and ISO 200 on a 50 millimeter <sighs> Sigma art lens. Lightroom always says that it's a Tokina opera, but it's not. It's a Sigma art lens. So that's one everyday example of how to get to this effect, right? Another simple example is when you have a window. So here, as you'll see in the behind the scenes, I'm shooting in this kind of large home and I just have her standing in front of a window and I'm actually standing really far back, again, on a 50 millimeter lens. This is shot on a Sony at, at 1 200 f 1.8 ISO 800. All I'm gonna do real quick is just straighten out my angle. Let's just straighten the crop, okay? Now, once again, our subject is framed against a darker background, so we have complete control. If I flip this into black and white by pressing V, I can actually flatten out overall contrast. I can lift shadows, lift blacks, and actually lower exposure so we get kind of a more matte finish and simply use highlights to control the skin. This is what we called dark mode editing, right? It was when we were lowering exposure and we actually had a built-in preset for that in the Visual Flow Toolkit that we refer to as dark mode. So you select dark mode, it dials in these baseline settings, which you guys can pause the video, save these baseline settings. And from here, you just kind of tweak to get to the right exposure on that particular image. But it allows you to have direct control over skin tone. Let's go to another one. This is that exact same room. Once again, you can see how she's framed against the darker background. And we can choose to crop out this left side if we want. I kind of liked it. Uh, when I shot the image. So again, this is that same shot. Uh, well, the same room, you guys have already seen how this was shot. Let's go to a different spot. This one's a bit different because this is in that same home. Yes, it's a insane home that we had access to for a day. Uh, this is in that same home. We shot this again on the same camera and lens, 1 250th F 1.8 NISO 800. And it's example of kind of chiaroscuro, but less dramatic. So the way I would edit this is actually for a kind of brighter pastel vibe, okay? So I would kind of go to this bright area. I'm gonna pull back the uh, contrast a little bit and then lower the exposure. And I would kind of aim for this sort of brighter, more film kind of look to it. And this goes to show that this sort of Rembrandt uh, style effect. This chiaroscuro lighting doesn't necessarily have to be a dramatic image. Here she's still placed against a darker background. We still have highlights along the face. We still have the exact same control over skin tones because the skin tones are in the highlight range. But I'm going to go for this image. I'm going to go for something much more flat, much more kind of commercial, but it still has that feel to it. And it still has that kind of refinement where when you look at the image, it, it feels almost like a little bit painterly. Oh, and as far as how this image was shot, same thing, natural light. You're gonna see in the behind the scenes that we have this large window to the left side of me. All I've done is positioned her and chose my angle so she's kind of looking into that light so it's off to the left side. So we're just using natural light. I want you to see, because it's if you're in the studio and you're using a flash, you probably already know that this concept applies to studio and flash photography. What we don't often think about is all the natural light opportunities that we can create this without even having to set up a light. Now, this is another one of those examples. I actually shot this out with the f-stoppers in Puerto Rico. And had I submitted this for my image in the contest, I probably would have won Patrick and Lee, but I didn't. I chose the wrong image. Well, we only knew it was wrong because I lost, that, that's why. Anywho, all I have her doing, and I don't think I have behind the scenes for this specific shot, but all I have her doing, you can see it right here. She's just next to an open window, the light's landing right on her, and once again, everything in the background is kind of dark. So I'm just choosing my background so she's framed against that spot. Now, because of that, again, I have this control, this freedom. I'm gonna choose soft light from the modern pack. Now I'm just going to lower the exposure down a little bit, and I can choose wherever I want this to go, right? I'm actually gonna add in a radial burn right to the face. Okay, I'm gonna pull this in just a little bit. And at 0.5, it actually looks really nice. And then from here, I'm gonna flatten out the contrast and use my highlights to simply control where I want the face to be. Okay, i add a little bit more white point. And it makes it so easy to go from, let me go from the uh, before. So here's the before and here is the after. And once again, it looks 
produced. It looks painterly. It looks very professional, like as if we added a light, as if we added our own flash and controlled it, but it's just natural light and it's just utilizing the chiaroscuro technique. So I want you guys to get out and play with this. Chiaroscuro is such a powerful technique from classic painters that you can pull into your work to level up your portraits right away. I hope you guys enjoyed this tutorial. If you did, I'd love for you to subscribe to the Adorama TV channel. Let me know what you think about the video in the comments below. I might not always get a chance to reply, but I do read them and get ideas for future videos. In the meantime, turn on your notifications. I know I just did the thumbs up and that don't make no sense, but the notifications bell will actually inform you when new videos go up and I would love to see you guys back here next week when I upload a new video. Meantime, y'all can follow me at Born and Creative on TikTok as well as at Pygersa on Instagram and I'll see you guys next time. Peace.